it's so bright outside and yet it still feels so dark in our apartment. Hello, hello everyone, my name is Laura and this is my channel Laura's Little Library and welcome to my January wrap up. So incredibly enough, I read 18 books this January, which is not anything close to how I've been reading in the past. Like, I, this was an incredible reading month for me. I'm still not completely sure why. I don't know what it was. I just got so much reading done. I will say though, I will not be talking about five of the books that I did read this month because they were children's books that was for a work thing. Um, so it's not, uh, they were not books that I picked up for my own enjoyment and because I wanted to actually talk about and read and review it was it was something that was asked of me so there were five like children's picture books that I read um, that I won't talk about because I'm not interested in it some of them are on my Goodreads that definitely helped my numbers improve quite a bit but I'll still be talking about 13 books that I read this month that you know, and it was a pretty good reading month. It was like an average reading month. I had a couple five stars, a two star, like, book I did not enjoy. So, yeah. Okay, let's just get into it. I have divided this up by genre, and I will have timestamps down below if you're interested in a specific genre. So let's just get started with the manga that I read. So I read volume three of Spy X Family. I'm holding up volume four because I don't own volume three, but I did get it from the library and check it out on my Kindle and read it as an ebook. But now I can finally read volume four. Um, and I loved it very much. I just, I love the series and I love the concept and I feel like each book is so short, but something happens in each book that I just like. So they tend to be five stars um, just cause I'm very much, enjoying this entire series so far. Like I said, I'm only on like the fourth one, but yeah, I, if you are interested in manga, I would recommend this. It's about a spy who has to form this fake family in order to complete his mission. So he ends up fake marrying an assassin. He doesn't know that she's an assassin. Um, and then they end up adopting a little girl who is able to read people's minds, but she's afraid to tell people that she can read their minds because then she'll, you know, just get rejected and brought back to the orphanage. So she knows that her father's a spy and her mom's an assassin and she doesn't really know what to do and it's hilarious. I'm very much enjoying this, so I would very much recommend it. And then I read two other volumes. These were in the same manga and that is Silver Spoon Volume 2 and Volume 3. I am borrowing these from a friend. This is about a city boy who goes to an agricultural high school and he is trying to adjust to that but also figure out what his dream in life is, like what he wants to do, what are his goals that he wants to accomplish. Um, I, I like this manga a lot because I know that's going to be me. I, <laughs> I'm a city girl who wants to start a homestead, so it's kind of fun to see him learning even just the most basic farming things, uh, surrounded by people who are experienced farmers. Uh, so I can very much relate to it. It's a cute, it's very much a slice of life. So there isn't really much of a plot. Things just kind of happen, which normally is not my cup of tea, but because I can relate to the character, I am enjoying it. I don't think these are quite five stars. Like, I love the first one. I thought that was a five star, but I think it's just kind of mellowed out to be like, oh yeah, this is an interesting book. You know, I, I'm enjoying it, but I don't think it's quite a five star read. So yeah, but I'm going to keep going with this manga too, obviously. Okay, now we can move on to the holiday slash contemporary. So basically, in this section, I, I ended up getting a bunch of holiday books books from the library audiobooks that I had put holds on during the holiday season and they all came in early January because you know that's when everybody finishes them and no one wants to read them anymore. Uh, but I decided to still read them even though it was like well past the holiday season of course. So I, I read three holiday books and then one other contemporary and I'm just gonna kind of lump them all together. Uh, so the first one that I read was The Matzo Ball, and this follows a Jewish main character who secretly, she writes Christmas romances, but she also has a, a chronic fatigue 
illness. That's not the name of it, but it's it's the idea that, you know, she if she uses a lot of energy, then she needs a lot of time to recover. And that's not something she advertises to the world. She fell in love with a guy at summer camp and then he broke her heart and now he is back and putting on this grand matzo ball. And her publishers are pressuring her to write a Hanukkah romance instead of a Christmas romance. And she's not super psyched about that, which is a bummer. Uh, but she decides the matzo ball is the perfect opportunity to be inspired to write a Hanukkah romance. I liked this book. The romance itself it was a little ridiculous. I, I was rooting for the couple. But I just thought their attachment to the past was so strong and it kind of got to be a little annoying at times. But it definitely had like the trope of like once he finds out, it becomes so sweet. And it like had such a heartwarming ending that you know is coming but you're happy that that's how it turned out anyway. Like I thought the characters were pretty okay. I thought like it was just kind of a, a good book overall. Like, it was a 3.5 star read. Like, it was slightly better than average, but not quite at a 4 star level. Like, I liked the writing, the characters were okay, I loved the concept. I cannot speak to the representation at all, but other people have been able to of in other videos that I've seen, and they said it's pretty good, and it seemed good to me, but like I said, that holds zero weight. I thought it was just an above slightly above average like solid good book and a good one to read early in December when it's actually Hanukkah time. Then I read The Holiday Swap and this was a four star read I think. I, I very much enjoyed it. Was it perfect? No. Can I let go of the fact that it wasn't perfect? Yes because it was great. So The Holiday Swap follows twin sisters. One is a judge slash host of a baking show and one runs the family bakery and the one hosting a tv show has an accident she gets hit in the head and she loses her sense of smell and taste which are very important and also a, very scary but she can't let anybody know that she has lost this because she is up for a promotion of being in a new show and so she decides to propose to her sister to do a twin swap. Um, she'll go home and manage the bakery while her sister can go and finish the TV show for her. And it's a dual perspective, like we go back and forth between the sisters because the sister at home has her own drama of like breaking up with someone with her boy, her long term boyfriend and just like, it's a small town setting to it's you know a small wintry town. There was quite a bit of a lack of communication and plot convenience in the book uh, which bothered me only a little. It didn't bother me as much as it normally does so that was kind of annoying. I feel like there were some issues that could have been solved in a better way rather than just it got solved. Really like the main issue I had with it I thought it was, it was another like really good solid book like for a Christmas romance it was good. For it not trying to be anything more than just a fun holiday read, it was good. I personally loved all the baking. I will always love baking in books. Well, maybe not always, but I love books with baking, so that really helped it for me. Um, the love interests. For both of them, I liked both of the love interests. It took me to gr it took me time to grow on one of them because I just expected it to not work and have a different love interest but I immensely appreciated that it was it was the better love interest because there were like two options one who I hated one who I liked and the one that I liked ended up being the final one which was amazing uh, so I really grew to like that romance versus the other one it was like an instant like yep approved I like them so I love the love interest I love the baking such a sweet ending. The ending was kind of drawn out a little bit for my taste, but everything that happened I was happy about and was like glad I knew. So I think it could have been shorter again, but it was okay. So yeah, that was a solid like 4 out of 5 star book for me. I read A Holly Jolly Diwali by Sonia Lolly, and this was a 3 out of 5 star bordering on a 2.5. I the idea, the concept of the book sounded amazing, but it wasn't executed in the way that I expected, and it ended up being below my expectations. So, 
it is about this uh, woman, 28 year old woman, who does not have a life partner and she's kind of struggling with that and her family's kind of struggling with that and so at the same time like she asked like two people two or three people what Diwali was and they each kind of just had their own answer and then that was the end of it like I wish there was more exploration into the holiday like if you're gonna bring up the main character being interested in the holiday I want a better answer and I would think she wants a better answer than that also like if she's going back to like learn and be with family she did a terrible job of that another thing that bothered me about this main character was that she was 28 years old but she acted like a 17 year old like she read to me like a teenager someone who was dumb and irresponsible and petty rather than like a grown adult who is trying to figure out her life <laughs> and that was very annoying to me because i wasn't sure if this like it didn't read like an adult romance but I felt like it was supposed to. Like, it just seemed so confused. Like, there was no adult material in it. Like, it just, it was just so confused. And then the whole romance, like the love, I did not like the love interest. I felt like there was little to no chemistry between our main character and the love interest. And the chemistry that was there was just like bad. I just felt like all their interactions were just weird and didn't have any like positive results or results that made me feel for the characters or that they were falling in love and it kind of suffered from telling not showing because i like i said the chemistry just was not there and nothing happened to make me think that these characters were falling in love other than the main character saying i want to see him again i'm not in love because it's just the fling but i want to see him again and i'm like no of course you're not in love but it's also not like it, ugh. I just, I had a hard time with the romance, which was the main point of the book. I just ran into some technical issues. I don't remember what I was at other than complaining about a holly jolly Diwali. So I'm just going to go ahead and move on. The last contemporary book that I read was not a holiday romance, and that was Tokyo Ever After. This is by Nico Jean. It is a library book. Uh, so I'm very glad that I finished it this January, because um, it's due in February. But... I have a whole reading vlog dedicated to this. It was an impromptu reading vlog, so it's not like the cleanest or the most aesthetic. It's the raw, like, oh my gosh, I read this and I cried, I laughed, I joyed, and I died. So this was a five-star read for me. I absolutely adored it. I loved our main character. I loved the setting. I loved the writing. I loved how the narration, so it was first person, um, but our character's narration style was just so true to her character and it was a lot of fun to read from and I think that was probably my favorite thing about this book so this is basically the princess diaries but with Japan and it's it's still different from the princess diaries like it's it's the same concept of young girl doesn't know who her father is finds out figures out he is the prince of Japan and then goes to Japan to like become a princess kind of learn what she needs to do and who she needs to be. It's still very different from The Princess Diaries in many ways and I just absolutely loved this for what it was. I loved every scene. I I liked the romance. Probably wasn't my most favorite romance of all time but I liked it enough that like it still maintained a five star rating from me. Like I just I love this. So if you want more of my thoughts uh, you can go ahead. I'll like link the reading vlog sometime around now uh, if you want to watch that vlog because it was a lot of fun for me. It was interesting. I read this so quickly. Next I'm going to move on to historical fiction. I finished two historical fiction books this month and I am so incredibly proud of myself. So and here's why because the first one is Anna of Cleve. I had the cover to this and I took it off because I didn't like it very much and then I lost it. I, I think it may have gotten thrown away. I know I would never have thrown it away but I have moved twice since I started reading this book so it it most likely got lost or thrown away in a move but it is Anna of Cleve the princess in the portrait and this is by Alison Weir so this it's a little bit of a chonky book it legit took me two years to finish like I started this January 18th of 2020 and I finished it January like 25 or something of this year 2022 it legit took me two years to read this book so what had happened was when when it was 2020 
I decided that I was going to read a different genre each month of the year of 2020 to kind of explore my reading taste a little bit better. January was historical fiction. I read every book that month Except this one I started in the last week of January, but because I was in college and it's a thick one, I just didn't finish it. So I forced myself to put it down f because February was romance and etc. and so forth. And then when that year ended, I did try to pick this up last summer, but I had a really hard time getting back into it because I had gotten about halfway through the book and I had hit a lull in the book like it like everything slowed down it got super political and it was just too much for me so i def the pacing of this book was all over the place the first half was definitely better than the second half because so much happened in the first half and then the second half was like divorce until the ending where she died so this follows henry the eighth's fourth wife anna from Leave. I, I had a really hard time picking this book up again. It's just slow. It was thick, it was long, it was slow, it was hard. There were, there were some time jumps in here that just messed with my mind. Like, it, it was just not the most well organized. Like, I think the writing itself was fine. It just wasn't organized and I couldn't always keep up with the politics, which for the most part was okay because I could still get the gist of this is bad, this is good. But in terms of like how many people there were, it just, it just didn't happen. And I didn't really care. And that was such a big component of this book. I also, I liked Anna most of the time. So I actually ended up giving this like a three stars. Uh, like it was fine. It was a solid book. Definitely not my favorite, but it's not completely the book's fault like obviously I mentioned a lot of problems but there's also like the whole political thing is because of personal preference and not something uh, to be taken away from the book itself. The last book that I read in January was a historical fiction and that was Luck of the Titanic and this is by Stacey Lee. Again it's a library book. I fully checked this out with the library saying oh I, I'd seen that book I'd be interested in reading it but I did not expect to actually read it this month but then I found myself with time and so I read it. This is a, obviously it's a Titanic story. It follows a Chinese English main character. She and her brother are acrobats and they get on the Titanic. She wants to move to America as an acrobat and her brother is actually going to Cuba uh, to find work. He is not interested in being an acrobat. And there were a lot of things happening in this book. I dabble back and forth between three stars and four stars. I think, mm, personal preference three star but the book probably deserves four stars there was just a lot going on in this book and it was just a lot to keep up with because she is pretending to be someone she used to work for who is in first class but she switches back and forth between pretending to be mrs sloan so that you know she can actually get on the ship but also going down to third class where her brother and the other chinese passengers are and like going back and forth and then sometimes she dresses up as a boy in order to be an acrobat versus dressing up as a first class woman and then on top of that she meets this other person who's making her like do and wear certain things and there was just so much going on and then there was a romance plot thrown into it and I did not like the romance at all I felt there was no chemistry I didn't like the love interest it made no sense the ending uh, I mean, obviously it's a Titanic story, so we all know the ending, but even after the events of the Titanic sinking, I didn't like the ending. It was confusing and it was abrupt. It was just not my cup of tea. However, the book, the writing of this book was beautiful. There was, it was so visual, lots of similes and just like, you know, it, it wasn't quite poetry, but it had poetic elements to it. And I, I very much enjoyed it. I thought the writing was beautiful. I kind of liked our main character. Like, the acrobat aspect was cool. I appreciate that this is a story that has not been told. Like, the Titanic is a story that's been told before. But the Chinese immigrants is a story that has not been told before. So I appreciate it's that new voice. But this also reminds me that I just need to stop reading Titanic stories. I need to stop reading stories I know are going to be tragic. So now on to our last section, fantasy. And this is also the biggest section, I believe. 
So the first book that I finished was Seasons of Chaos by Ella Cosimano. It's the second book after Seasons of the Storm. It's a duology. I own the one, but not the second one, but the second one is the one that I finished and so the one I'll be talking about. This, mm, 3.5 stars, kind of. I think on Goodreads I may have marked it as four uh, because I still really enjoyed the idea of the book. It's a very hard concept to explain. Uh, so it's the idea that the seasons are humans, but there are like multiple humans per season. So you can have like multiple winters, summers, falls, autumns, springs, whatever. Um, and they, there is an institute and they're all planted throughout the world and they have to kill each other in order to change the season. That's the premise of the first book. I won't tell you the premise of the second book because it's a duology and I don't want to spoil it. I will say the villain in the second book, I wish he was a more attractive villain. And I don't mean like he wasn't cute. I mean like he just wasn't a good villain. I wasn't rooting for the heroes to beat him, but I wasn't rooting for him to do well either. Like, like he was just, he was not a villain that I loved to hate nor hated to love. He was just kind of there and I was a little disappointed in him. The romance, which this is like, a, this is a like fantasy romance kind of, but I, I just feel like the, we were missing just a little bit more of the romance. I think there could have been like more romance, more chemistry, and I feel like because of the start of the romance, it just wasn't what I was hoping it would be. Like I definitely, it felt like one of those romance that could just be a classic timeless tale, but it just never got there for me. There did seem to be quite a few like twists, turns, and like plot points. Some of them are kind of predictable, but I had a hard time with the loyalty and lack of with the characters. Like I feel like none of the characters had any loyalty to anyone. And that was just like, ugh, it, everyone's just spineless and it's not fun to read with characters like that. I will say though, I think I enjoyed this book more than the first one. The first one I think was a three stars. This one I think was slightly better. I don't know if it was really enough to bring it to a 4 star or just be a 3.5, but I did enjoy the second one, so if you read the first one and enjoyed it enough, the second one is definitely worth a read. Do I kind of wish that they had ended the first one a little bit better and then just not had a second one? Yes, but I'm not mad at the second one in itself. <laughs> then <laughs> I finally read Siege and Storm. By Lee Bardugo. I read Shadow and Bone way back in high school and now I finally picked this up and I hated this. It was a two-star read. I hated Mal. I hated Alina. I hated Mal and Alina. The Darkling just didn't do anything. The first half of the book was fine. The second half literally nothing happened and it was the most annoying thing. Like it felt like it felt like this series or this trilogy really should have just been a duology or this should have been half the size. Like I don't really like series where it's a big first book, tiny second book, big third book. But literally half of this book could have been cut out and so you either could have combined it with the first or the second because like the main event, the main point of this second book happened very early in this book and then I felt like she just kind of was like, well, we can't go into the plot of the third book yet because that's the third book, so I guess we're just gonna keep going until it's a solid book. And it just, it just, mm, it irked me so much. I admit I liked uh, Prince Nikolai. I thought he was a somewhat interesting character. Like, he in himself is not a unique character, but there were unique elements to him, which I appreciated. So the first half of the, the book, Alina just like beats up on herself. And then at the very end, she remembers, oh yeah, I'm a map maker and that has good qualities. And then the book ends. So I just felt like there was little character growth with her. Like she just kind of didn't do anything until the book ended. And there was a big event that I was hoping, I was hoping would happen. It did happen, I'm happy. But again, that could have been brought up so much more forward been a bigger event, made the book more interesting. Obviously, I'm still gonna pick up the third book because I need to finish the trilogy. I'm just glad I got this done before the second season comes out. But if I can finish the third one before the second season, then maybe I can actually read Six of Crows, which I haven't read yet. 
like I've seen the first season, so I know the spoilers for Six of Crows, but like, whatever, I still want to read it. So I think this was my worst read in the month. This is my two star. Oh my gosh, it drove me nuts. It just, it drove me insane. Moving on, I read Beneath the Sugar Sky by Seanan McGuire. It is the third book in the Wayward Children series. I only own the first two books, but now I really want to buy the third one, the one I just read. Uh, and I loved it. I rated it five stars. This book focused on the confectionery world, and that is the world. That is my world. I I am a baker, and I love that this book is like it's a non-logic, but there is still a pattern to it, which is something that I like. And I could just oh my gosh, to be in a world of all baked goods and to just sit there and bake all day and like not be burned when you stick your hands in the oven, like oh my gosh, I love it so much. So what's interesting about this series is that the first one was kind of like a murder mystery. The second one was like a slice of life. And this third one was an adventure story. And I, I enjoyed it. That plot, like, I just, I loved the good old fashioned adventure story. I loved how it was done. I love that we got to see not just one world, but actually two and both worlds that we had met characters who had gone there so they're not like completely new but at the same time Shauna McGuire did a great job introducing these new worlds to us like it was explained well without being over explained it was so much fun I thought the perspective the character that we followed was a very interesting choice but I loved it I I thought it was such a risky thing to do but it was done really well like, it was just so creative and so pure. I cannot help but love this book, especially since because this is the book that I relate to the most in terms of the world. So it's going to be interesting reading the rest of the book in the series because I know I'm most likely going to love them, but this might... They're... <laughs> like, I've rated all three books five stars so far, but this is, like, my top five star purely because it's me. I feel seen. I feel comforted. I feel warmed. The final book that I read this January was Vicious Spirits, and this is by Kat Cho. This is the second book in a duology. I believe it's the Gumeho duology. The first book was called Wicked Fox. This book was interesting. I gave it 2.5 out of 5 stars. Maybe 3. Like, it was so close. I think maybe it was more of a three star. It was not nearly as bad as Siege and Storm, which now that I think about it, it might get down to a one star, but really the first half of the book is what saved it. Anyway, this book, so the, I'm not even going to try and explain it. It's based off of Korean mythology. It follows the nine-tailed fox. And like I said, this is the second book in the duology, so I don't want to give too much away because these are all spoiler-free reviews. Probably except for Siege and Storm, just because it's such a popular book, but anyway. The, in the second book, you you don't follow the same main character. Like, it's dual perspective, but in the other two characters, which I thought could have been done better. Because here's the thing, I liked their romance, I liked how they came together, I liked the characters, I just felt like we were missing the main couple like I still feel like they're the side characters even though they're the ones telling the story because all the drama was still about the first character so about Myung. I, I had such a hard time because I loved Junu and Solman. I liked the love story between Junu and Solman and I liked that it was brought forward but I felt like they just took away so much from Jihoon and Myung. like because especially the book is still very much Myung's story, but it's no longer being told through her or by her, so it just felt weird. Like, I just feel like it was out of balance. And, th and that was just... I had a hard time with that, and that was the whole book long. This book also suffered from said so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so said. Like, whenever there was a conversation with people, I, it always stuck out to me that I was like, blah, 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 said so-and-so, blah, 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 so-and-so said, blah, 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 said so-and-so. Like, it just used said and the names so many times that it actively annoyed me. And I stopped paying attention to what the characters were saying and just kept being like, oh my word, the author's still doing said, blah, 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 said, blah, blah, blah. And it, it just, 
I couldn't do it. I was very frustrated by it. Like, it was the weirdest thing for that to be so bothersome, but it was just so repetitive. I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. And it was an audiobook too, so I was just like, oh my word, move on already. I felt like the book overall was a bit slow, and the other issue I had is that I felt like we would start the plot point, and then, like, the author, like, changed her mind or something and just kind of dropped it, said, nope, that didn't work, try something else, and it just felt like nothing got completed. Like, it didn't feel like plot twists or failing and trying something else. It just, it just didn't flow at all. It just kind of like, oh, here's an idea, and eh, never mind. Oh, here's an idea, and eh, never mind, we'll go with something else. And it just, it was so jerky, and it didn't work very well for me. It was, mm. I don't, again, I had a hard time with that. I, I think it was a good idea, it just wasn't executed well. I still very much appreciate the found family. I think we missed an entire character, but whatever. So, yeah, I just had a hard time with the characters, the point of view, and the plot. Which, I'm a plot-driven reader, so that does mean a lot to me. Those are all the books that I read this January. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe down below. I post videos on Sundays and Wednesdays, and I've got a lot of fun content coming up, so... Mm. Also, I have other bookish social medias linked down below. Feel free to follow me. I will follow you back, and we can chat, get recommendations from each other, have all the fun. Otherwise, feel free to comment down below what was your favorite or least favorite book that you read in January. Just what were some of the books you read recently? I would love to hear from you. But until I see you all in the next video, I wish you happy reading.